Hello everyone, Brian P here. Welcome to my channel. Uh, so today we'll be discussing about uh, how I got my job in Dubai. Um, so I've been a GIS engineer in, in a prop tech space in Dubai, working with over 45 nationalities, I believe so. So maybe some of you are interested to also venture into Dubai, Singapore, Amsterdam, Berlin, and among other cities in all, all over the world that has like expert community. Okay, so yeah, it's quite an interesting venture and uh, to really work with the, uh, a lot of diversity, you know, diverse people and getting different ideas, you know. Um, so uh, for, for me, it was really pretty straightforward. I'll just start with my experience. For one, it, uh, I got the Dubai offer, it was via LinkedIn. So LinkedIn is a really key social platform. Um, it's, it's like a Facebook for professionals. So if you don't have a LinkedIn account, I'd really advise you have one. Um, so for, for, for LinkedIn, uh, again, it's pretty simple. You really need to, to optimize it um, so that you put your open to offers and then you can say which cities you want to go to. And uh, also if you want a part-time, full-time, remote, those kind of jobs, okay? Because uh, because even when you just have a LinkedIn account and you haven't really optimized it, um, then the LinkedIn algorithm won't help to bring your profile kind of up, okay? So for example, um, mostly recruiters. Um, so recruiters are usually uh, people given a task to get talent to fill a specific roles, right? And uh, they're usually companies that have in-house recruiters, but then also the companies that are sourced to agencies that, that just focus on recruitment, maybe on various tech or various fields, you know. So what recruiters mostly do, even when there's a job advert, uh, they also try their best to get um, a good talent uh, apart from the application pool. They also go to LinkedIn and, um, and search, uh, for example, software engineer plus Java, you see, plus Spring or something, you see. And uh, so, the profiles will tend to come up so for maybe for a person who has really put uh, you're open to offers and what not it will be easy for your profile to to be among the top and then if the recruiter likes your profile uh, and sees your potential your potential candidates uh, the recruiter will reach out to you and ask you if you're interested in such a uh, a certain position in this country or in this city and what not okay yeah, then after that, uh, you go through the interview process. So for my case, for example, I was reached out by a recruit uh, a recruitment agency um, and they didn't even tell me the name of the firm first. So it was just like, hey, and they told me about the job description and what it entails. It was like a, a firm starting out uh, 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 on GIS and stuff. They didn't have any GIS uh, person or resource. And so, yeah, it, it looks kind of interesting. And... Um, so that, that was like two years ago, I was quite um, uh, early in my career. I'm still early in my career, but uh, two years ago, I was still way younger, like 24 or something. Okay, so uh, when when they reached out, yes, I, I said, okay, I'm interested. And then uh, after that, I was I did an interview. The first interview was, it was just via Skype and stuff. Uh, so it was via, um, the, I did, uh, the first interview was by data, the head of data science. Then after that, uh, it was followed by the chief uh, product officer, then finally the chief technical officer. So after quite some time, they, you know, they also interview multiple candidates, right? Like I wasn't the only one being interviewed. So sadly after that, I got a feedback that I was, uh, I couldn't make it because I had way lesser experience. So. Uh, but the thing is, uh, for me, when I usually plan to join a company, I usually note down like how am I going to benefit the company, transform it, or how my skills going to be beneficial. So even though they did turn me down, I'd also shared the document about that, and they really liked it. Uh, so it's like I became like um, a second candidate uh, because I had less uh, my number of experience. They took someone with like ten years experience. At that time, I had like was it two or three years of experience in the industry. I think two or three yes so uh, after that uh, so they told me they'll come back uh, if they ever need to expand the team or need someone uh, I'll, they'll get in touch um, after one year to be honest they did um, they reached out to me interested in having me in the team 
because it was initially a one man team but again the person who was hired was leaving uh, got a better prospect somewhere else um and so yeah i i i did another interview so the guy who was there gave me like uh, it was mostly a technical interview a little bit of uh, uh programming and producing a web map uh, okay so it was about uh, consuming shape file and then uh, just showing it on our web map on something like open layers and what was it a GGS in GGS and format not also GGS and data sets okay so yeah uh, and then after that uh, yeah I got my so the first thing after that someone usually gets an offer then um, and, and on this offer part let, let me uh, usually tell you guys uh, uh, if you are from maybe a, a wage and not super expensive country don't don't usually say you are salary fast or what you really want because at times you might mess yourself up thinking you, d you didn't do the numbers in economics and you might uh, you might mess yourself up so for me i usually let the company give an offer first and then uh, uh, i counter uh, okay because uh, uh, with that it will be easy you won't have undermined yourself uh, so much or you won't have undermined yourself at all you know because at least they'll be giving you the market rate or something according to their standard or what uh, almost close to what they are budgeted for definitely there is um, in most companies there is usually room for negotiation yeah then it depends how good you are of a negotiator you know it boils down to you being uh, good in negotiation then then after that, after sending the offer letter, you you will get a, a contract, now a full detail contract, like mine was like a 13 page, the offer letter was just a one page simple saying your salary, basic, uh, breaking down your salary into details, uh, yep, then you get a full detailed contract, uh, which is like a 13 page document, uh, and then after signing that, now it will be about visa processing yeah the company will really be helping you a lot on when it comes to visa processing and then yeah time came i came to dubai the flights were paid by the company so i came to dubai there was a one month uh, booking in the hotel so it was like if you familiarize, you familiarize yourself with dubai and then after one month you get your own apartment yeah and, and something like that so that's how it was um, quite uh, an interesting experience and and uh, I, I just got, I just don't want to, to to let you know that it's only LinkedIn so apart from LinkedIn you can also try to look at other sites or like or just Google search on if they uh, if there's any visa sponsorship jobs in, in the roles that you're interested in yeah but but still uh, LinkedIn is king yeah example even for, for for Dubai most recruiters like most people my co colleagues friends recruiters keep preaching on them on LinkedIn and um, it seems like it's the main poaching site or uh, head hunting site um, in most expert communities so yeah it's it will be really good to to focus on that look on it optimize it if you are open for offer stated and this hasn't really worked out for me or for people in Dubai because there are also some other close Kenyans at home close to me have also gotten offers in other cities you know uh, and countries so yeah so it's about just just that uh, leveraging on social media and also currently the new platforms especially for example if you're a good writer you can start doing articles on medium.com uh, if you're a developer maybe you can do articles on dev.2o and also medium uh, and among other places you know uh, and this uh, kind of kind of leverages you gives you a platform um, global platform kind of and then after that it's just about you uh, working hard and getting those offers and seeing which one works for you yeah so that's it if you have any question or there's anything that i've missed on and you really want to know uh, let me know because yeah i'm just speaking still from my head trying to recall stuff but yeah that's it uh, uh so it's, it's it's quite interesting okay and uh 
I think I'll see you guys uh, next time uh, when I do maybe the cost of living uh, for for Dubai. So uh, I'm using my case. I'm I'm not going to be the standard uh, for for you to do uh, to be sure of how much. But yeah, Dubai is a uh, is an expensive city compared to, for example, Nairobi. Yeah, but uh, but I've been comfortable, quite comfortable here. So it's it's great. Okay, see you guys next time. Bye, see you.